Hello and welcome to worship this August 29th. We're glad to be able to continue to worship with you this way, either online or on the radio. And a reminder that we gather in person in our sanctuary at 815 and outside on our patio at 915. This is the schedule we're going to keep uh, going forward through the month of September. It's a best practice for us to offer these four different ways for worship. Pastor Tim is on vacation this week. We wish him uh, safe travels and a good time gathering with family and friends. Last week, we had a great Sunday morning. We were able to baptize George Nagel at our first service, and at our second service, we blessed a number of our kids with backpack blessings and sent them on their way. We keep in our prayers this week all who are associated with our school system, our administrators, teachers, aides, and students. Um, prayers that they continue to have a good learning experience. And speaking of learning experience, it's almost preschool time. This week we'll have our preschool open house downstairs with Miss Smith and Miss Rochelle. Um, after a couple of years where our numbers have waned, Miss Smith has grown our program again and has full classrooms downstairs. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is her four or five kindergarten readiness class. And on Tuesday, Thursday, she's gonna have a full classroom of littles. And boy, are they little. So prayers for Miss Smith, Miss Rochelle, and all of those students returning to our building. Also in our prayers this week, we keep Lynn Oldenburg, who is fighting cancer. He and Lee are pursuing some of the best care for him. So prayers for them as they um, look for that care and a plan forward. Prayers also for Don Garvin and Mickey Morrow, who were hospitalized this past week with COVID-19. For all who are currently battling COVID at home, and for a number of our members who are experiencing the long-term side effects of COVID. Uh, it is just something that is surrounding us and making many hearts heavy. So prayers for all of those families. And this morning, we welcome all who are listening on our radio broadcast. Today's broadcast is sponsored by Harold and Dorothy Everson. We are so thankful for their continued support and hope that you all received their new address. Harold and Dorothy moved this last week and we wish blessings on them as they listen for the first time from their new home. Let's take a moment now to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We listen now to our opening song, number 532, Gather Us In.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together our prayer of the day. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may, preserve, may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving to you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear these all these statutes will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life, making them known to your children and your children's children. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. We read from Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart who do not slander with their tongue, and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even, their, even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Here ends the reading. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they were thoroughly washed their hands, and thus observing the tradition of the elders, they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing an outs outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, de deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I've noticed an interesting new trend in the movies and the shows I've been watching lately. It's happening across genres and streaming services, so it's not just a pocket of film production out there. 
All these shows are shows I've binged. Watching a whole season in a week, or the other night I watched a whole season in one night, staying up too late. But that way I could finish all six half-hour episodes a little bit past my bedtime. But I stayed up so late because I just couldn't turn away or click the remote off. I wanted to see what happened to these people. I needed to see what happened to these people, to these messy, broken, complicated, imperfect, charming, enthralling people. And that's the new trend I'm seeing, watching these shows, caring about characters who at times I found myself pausing and asking, do I even like these people? Are they a little too broken? Have they crossed a few too many lines? Should I even be cheering for them? The first show that gave me pause was a coming of age series, focusing on a teen living in the aftermath of her father's death and navigating US high school culture with her identi Indian identity. It's got all the teen angst you love about these shows. There's two friend sidekicks, as you'd expect, and two love interests, as you'd expect. But it wasn't just your usual teen rom-com. These characters are complex. All of them. Sidekicks and love interests included. Every one of them were enduring. But they all also had moments that were pretty appalling about how they treated each other. At times I asked, do I even like Davy? Do I really want things to work out for her? Well, I'm anxiously awaiting the release of season three. So apparently I do. The next show was a little more clear cut as to who the good guys were and the bad. A little. Some of the people were just downright painful to watch. But then you get a glimpse of their backstory or see a moment of their cold, dead heart opening up a little. And you momentarily wish it's not their remains that were boarded on the plane as the teaser at the beginning of the show. But if these people were so terrible, why did Eric and I blow through six episodes about them in three days? We even watched during broad daylight. Not the usual after we put the kids to bed parent movie time. We just couldn't wait. They must not have been entirely good or bad. And then this last one. I admit it, I watched it all in one night because there was a clear heroine. For minute one, I was cheering for her. I wanted to love her, support her, champion for her because she is in the right. Absolutely in the right. And she should come out on top in all of this. But even in six episodes and even with my unwavering support of her cause, she's messy too. I'm not sure I totally like her either. She makes some questionable choices along the way. But I watched and I cheered and I championed and I had righteous holy anger on her behalf. And I stayed up past my bedtime to see how it all turned out. Maybe it's I've watched too many Hallmark movies, which are not known for their complexities or their deep character development. But I've also read lots and lots of excellent books. And I have a few other favorite shows and movies that include characters who are not perfect, some even deeply flawed. But I think these new shows have been unabashed in their celebration on complexity and flaws. They don't let us easily characterize the heroes and the villains, the good and the bad, the right and wrong. They don't put people neatly into boxes and label them. And luckily, neither does Jesus. The reality of this is this is nothing new. It's just that I've hit a streak of really, really well done storytelling and the art of human analysis lived out in the complexities of life. I've just had a few good weeks of my relationship with Netflix and HBO Max. All of these are beautiful works of art for sure, but they're unmatched to the work of God in the story of Jesus and his repudiation of labels, simplicities, and neatly divined categories to his stories of working with the imperfect 
in order to tell us all what is true and holy and sacred and sustaining. This week, the part of the story of Jesus is about washing hands. The religious leaders, the publicly righteous folks, those above reproach are mad that Jesus' followers don't follow their purity code in washing their hands. So if you can't quite visualize it, I imagine the scene playing out in one of my shows. I picture the Pharisees in fantasy clothes with lots of gold embroidery, noses pointed high to the sky, marching into the high school cafeteria, walking up to the less popular kids' table where Jesus sits and with a huff saying, Ew, yuck. Why are you sitting with those people? They're dirty. Of course, the Pharisees would be all smug like all the popular kids in movies are. And in my less complex mind, I'd expect Jesus to stand up, maybe flip a lunch tray or a whole table, as he's prone to do, and he'd rebuff them by defending his dirty friends. Dirt is cool. Putting food in your mouth with filthy hands is awesome. Leave these guys alone. You may not like them, but these messy, gross people are my people. And then a cheer would break out across the cafeteria, starting low and quiet with just a few kids, but then it catches on. More dirt, more dirt, more dirt. And then maybe with dirty, grubby, filthy hands, Jesus would grab a stack of tater tots and shove them all in his mouth. Okay. Maybe I've seen too many teen coming-of-age movies. It's a fair critique. But that's not the complexities that Jesus dwells in. He defies labels and teams and easy outs and categories and popular and unpopular. No one gets put down by Jesus for solely being a them. And no one gets a pass for being one of us. Instead, in this moment, Jesus gathers the whole crowd together and makes it not about washing hands not about us and them, but instead about all of our complexities. With things like washing hands, it doesn't so matter, much matter if we do it or not. Public side note, please do it. I think Jesus would say to do it, knowing all that we know about germs and diseases, I think Jesus would totally be on board. Wash your hands. But that's not today's point. For right now, in this moment, Jesus, with his cafeteria full of Pharisees and dirty hand eaters, it's not about washing hands. It's about why you do it. Are you doing these things to serve God and neighbor? Or are you doing these things to elevate yourself and not God? To condemn your neighbor and not serve them? Are you doing these things to serve God and neighbor? Or are you doing these things to elevate yourself and not God? To condemn your neighbor, not serve them? Ufta. Chief of sinners though I be. The best stories out there on film, on TV, in books, and in sacred scripture are the ones that make us look back into ourselves and into our own hearts and our own motivations. They invoke in us not just sympathy, but empathy. Not just pity, but actual shared pain. They make us look in the mirror and ask, am I any better than them? Us versus them is rampant in our town right now. Righteousness is being claimed all around. And while we desire a Jesus that flips tables and proclaims us as victors, what we get is the gospel. The gospel that we need. That on our best days we believe and cling to. And that saves us daily. 
Even when we want to claim it for our sides, we don't get a proclamation of victory. But a question. Are you doing these things to serve God and neighbor, or are you doing these things to elevate yourself and not God? To condemn your neighbor and not serve them? The what is important, but the why is what defines you. The why is what defines you. So look in the mirror on that one. Jesus came to love us, to show us grace, to save us from our sin. Because we're all sinners. All of us. Messy, complex, and broken. And we all need not only a friend, not only a teacher, not only a guide, but a savior. We live our both our best, most faithful and righteous life when we know that truth. When we get comfortable with our own mess and brokenness and our own grace received and love unearned. Then we come before Jesus imperfections and all and are welcomed into the only us that matters. Children of God, simultaneously saint and sinner, eternally loved and forgiven. Amen. We listen now to our hymn of the day, number 592, Just As I Am Without One Plea. church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God who saves us from our sin, we give thanks that you call us your own, that you call us to serve you and our neighbor, and that you show us grace when we fail. Guide our days to your service and to be graceful with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for our neighbors who are hurting and homeless. We lift up the people of Haiti, recovering from the earthquake, and for our Afghani siblings who leave their home country and must find community, meaningful work, friends, and support in places entirely new to them. May we be the neighbors they need and welcome them with open arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, we pray for endurance for our healthcare workers and community leaders as they fight the surge of COVID-19. They are rightfully tired and weary and are looking for light at the end of this. May we each do our part to support, surround, and steady them, and may our actions give them hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we lift up before you those who need the wholeness you offer. We pray for Don Garvin and Mickey Morrow recovering from hospitalization of COVID, for all who are fighting COVID at home, for those who battle our con cancer in our congregation, especially Linda Oldenburg, for all people on our prayer list, and those we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, who is our teacher, we give thanks for the beginning of the school year in our community. We pray for students, teachers, aides, coaches, and administrators who are working together to create communities that foster growth, respect, curiosity, friendship, and learning. We lift up especially the ministry of American Lutheran Church Preschool. And Miss Smith and Miss Rochelle. Keep them all in your heart as they grow in love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now together the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we continue to give thanks for your generosity in supporting the ministry of this church uh, for all the ages that we support. This week, we lift up how your giving supports American Lutheran Church Preschool and the youngest members of our community and their families. Thank you for your generous offerings. And now receive the benediction. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. We listen now as the praise team sings, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.